Hey guys, Chris Smith here. Let's talk about fishing in under condition, severe conditions. Um, whether it's pressure from a tournament, weather change, um, pressure from other competitors, you know, pressure from pre-fishing, pressure from you get to a spot you think you had all to yourself and you have multiple people there so you're fishing behind each other. Um, so when conditions make the fishing tough, one of the things you want to think about is downsizing. And when I say downsizing, it can mean a lot of things to a lot of people, but honestly, most people just throw on a smaller bait and they keep the same size hook and the same weight and the same line. <clears throat> and maybe it doesn't give them the exact benefits that they wanted to just by downsizing alone. And it's a little bit deeper than that. So, I mean, the first part about downsizing your baits for these pressure conditions, um, and especially for pressured water from other anglers, whether it be from motorboats, other kayak anglers, you want to definitely downsize the profile of the lure you're using. We all like to throw big lures, but, you know, there's going to be situations where they're not going to work and you're going to have to downsize. So getting that profile to be a little bit smaller can be very key uh, with it. And, and it's not just downsizing by an inch. Sometimes you got to go from like a six inch bait to a three inch bait. Sometimes you have to cut it in half. And sometimes downsizing means changing the baits altogether. Instead of flipping and pitching like a beaver bait, maybe it's flipping and pitching a small worm. Like a big TRD is a small worm. Or even, you know, like a hula stick. Or there's a plethora of other baits out there you can talk about throwing. Um, and along with downsizing the bait, you really want to downsize your speed as well. And you want to slow down uh, under those conditions. And it's not just a matter of slowing down a little bit. You actually want to give it really big, long pauses. And I like to use, under those conditions, I like to use uh, floating baits. Because when you give it that big, long pause, the bait will tend to float up a little bit. And it will give it its own very subtle action with whatever currents in the water at the time. So that can elicit bites. And you can see it on my YouTube page. I got one, you know, how slow do you fish the worm is the name of the video. And it's super slow. You see me pause it. And, you know, and, and it wasn't a great big fish. But for that tournament, it would have been great because it was an 18-inch fish. So, you know, when you think about it in those terms that when you're fishing under hard conditions where getting, just getting your limits sometimes can be tough, any fish counts. So some of these techniques will really pay off for you especially slowing down and giving those long pauses. And when I say slowing down, I mean in a long pause, I mean like a 30 second pause, a really long pause. And then it's also about positioning the bait correctly too, because if you're fishing, if your pressure is because other people are fishing in your area and you're having to fish behind them, don't pitch to the, you know, if you're pitching and flipping, you small, you know, and you downsize, you got smaller baits on, don't pitch and flip to the same exact piece that you normally would of wood. You know, that the obvious piece of wood that comes out and sticks out and that you want to pitch right to where it has a little cross section with another piece laying over it. Pitch really far back and even really shallow as long as there's structure because as that pressure increases and fish get caught, the fish that remain pull farther and farther back and they'll get, they'll actually pull themselves back up into really shallow water if there's other structure around it. So it's a kind of important to, to hit that stuff really far in the back. And honestly, you're going to lose some baits, right? Because you're going to snag up because it's the harder to reach spots. It's the spots that other people aren't fishing. So the fish that have pulled up in there, hopefully haven't seen the bait. And talk about pausing a floating bait. Man, when the bite gets really tough, I'll throw in that nasty stuff and I'll just let it set. And I've let baits sit ridiculously long before just to see what happens. And uh, it's amazing how long you can let them sit and still get bites, too. But that's some uh, really good info. And, that, and, you know, and we're still not done with downsizing. So we've downsized the bait. You've slowed it down. Let's talk about the hooks. 
you know, when I downsize my baits, I downsize my hook. And not only do I go from like a three aught to like a one aught to like a one, depending on the size of the bait, I also go to a thin wire, quality thin wire hook, too, because it, of course we're fishing this way because the bite's tough. And with the bite being tough, I don't want this fish to spit it out right away. So if I get a chance to put a thin wire hook on, I'm putting a thin or quality thin wire hook on. And make sure you use a quality one because you know there's some like you can buy at some of the big retailers that just are garbage, honestly. So you know, get a Mustang or or something like that, something that's really high quality hook and use that. Um, and that's you're gonna find that that gives you a lot of a lot of extra hookups because it gives you an extra second where the fish will pick it up and hang on to that bait an extra second or two. And that gives you a chance to really set the hook on them. Um, and when you pair that with the size that you go with or a floating bait, a small floating bait, and you go with the, the correct length hook with thin wire, that thing will really float up. And sometimes you can even get a little bit of separation from the bottom um, with the bait if it floats up enough. And you get a situation like that, it's almost like a, Car like a small Carolina rig. Um, and that's really good when you're doing these pressured waters again and you're letting it sit and soak for a while. Um, this, this all plays into that. And the other part of downsizing is the weight. You know, if you like throwing like a three quarters normally or something a little bit heavier for pitching and flipping, keep going down until you start getting bit because it will slow the fall rate down a lot. And as it slows the fall rate down, you'll start getting some glide action out of some baits. You know, especially smaller beavers will give you some weird glides that you normally don't get, especially if you're, uh, um, you know, when you peg them, a lot of people like to peg them. If you take that bobber stop and slide it down a little bit so the weight can separate just a little bit, you'll get these crazy little glides and the bait will do all this weird stuff on them when it's falling. And that will help with the bites because they haven't seen something like that before because of the profile being small, the hook being small, um, and the bait being separated from the weight a little bit. I don't even always peg myself when I'm pitching and flipping when the conditions get hard because I feel like it gives them a little bit different presentation than that they're used to if you're pitching and flipping, you know, especially like if you're in a small, small creek where you can pitch both sides. I think it's really, really important to use those slide up smaller weights, you know, cut them in half, cut them in half again, you know. Um, a lot of times I throw a quarter ounce, I'm a little light on my weights a lot of times, so a lot of times a quarter ounce, but then I'll go to eight ounce. You know, I'll go from a three-aught light wire hook to a uh, one light wire hook. You know, they're still both light wires. I fish light wire hooks a lot just in general, but you know, getting that hook to be the right size so the bait itself can do the magic that you're spending the money on the baits to do, you know. Especially those floating baits, you know, if you can get a section of that bait where the hook isn't holding it stiff and the bait can move in the water, it can be really money in these conditions. So, guys, I hope this segment helped you out a little bit uh, for fishing tournaments or fishing those pressured waters at home. Amen. I'll talk to you later.